very real. One of the things that Nick said is that you all are living and being a part of history. And we may not necessarily understand it or recognize it right now, but one of the things that I recognize is that this struggle, this fight, is so much greater than Marilyn Mosby. It has nothing to do with Marilyn Mosby. It has everything to do with the fact that Marilyn Mosby is about what I represent for us. Yes. Prosecutors are one of the most important stakeholders in the criminal justice system. We decide who's going to be charged, what they're going to be charged with, what sentence recommendations we're going to make. We decide whether somebody's going to get into the criminal justice system in the first place. And when 95, this is a system that has disproportionately impacted black and brown communities for decades. Say so. And when 95% of those individuals are making decisions about our daily lives are white, and 79% are white men, mm. Let me just tell you, I represent 1% of all elected prosecutors in the country. Mm. 1%. And the reason why I became a prosecutor is because I was sitting in my law school class and the mission and the vision of a prosecutor is justice mm. yes. over convictions. Justice. Mm -hmm. That's what we brought to the state's attorney's office in Baltimore City. And let me tell you, that has been a, not only a national model, but a global model. Come on. So when I saw, and I'm four months into my term, mm -hmm. and I see an innocent 25-year-old black man by the name of Freddie Carlos Gray right. Jr. Come who on. made eye contact with police in a high crime neighborhood, my neighborhood, and decided to run who was unconstitutionally arrested and placed into a metal wagon head first and feet shackled and handcuffed. I followed the facts with the law and I wouldn't do anything differently. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. He won when, his, when, his, when his pleas for medical attention were ignored. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do anything differently. Understanding and recognizing Accountability in this country at that point, prosecutors weren't holding police officers. That accountability led to exposure. A week after I charged those officers, the Department of Justice came in, exposed a pattern and practice of discriminatory enforcement of the eighth largest police department in the country. That exposure ultimately led to reform, despite the, the Trump administration that tried to stop it. Because of that spotlight of entrenched police corruption, my office had to play cleanup for one of the largest police corruption scandals in the history of the country, yeah. where we had rogue officers planting guns and drugs on citizens for decades. Come on. Yeah. We went down to Annapolis to change the laws, to ensure that in the equity and shortness of, of fairness and justice, when it required that we would be able to vacate, that means get rid of these convictions that should not have been there. We were the ones at the forefront. And I, I, I gotta tell you, the reason why I'm so impassioned about this work is because it's not about me. It's about what I represent to us. And my cousin was killed outside of my home in broad daylight when he was mistaken as a neighborhood drug dealer. If it wasn't for the prosecutor's office, I would not have received any sort of justice. Mm. But what I understood in that moment when I walked into that court system, coming